In this video, we will draw a basic diagram of the main somatic nerve pathways. To get started, you will need paper and as many different colored pens or pencils as you desire. I will be using Pilot Gel Pens and Sharpie Highlighters to color code my drawing for clarity. For this lesson, you will need a drawing of a basic cross-sectional spinal cord segment. We are going to add a few other landmarks that will only be placemarked by simple shapes. Further detail is not required for this particular material. Our first important landmark for our pathways is the medulla oblongata, which is the most inferior and caudal portion of the brainstem. Our second landmark of note is the thalamus. The thalamus along with the hypothalamus are part of the diencephalon. The thalamus is a major relay station for our somatic nerve systems. The last notable landmark is the telencephalon, or cortex. We will draw a basic representation of this by drawing a C, then drawing a curvy backwards G to the right of it. We will draw a vertical line between these two shapes to represent the central sulcus that separates the frontal and parietal lobes. When drawing out nerve pathways, it is important to classify the neurons within the system and define the most likely location of their individual neuron cell bodies and axon projections. This helps us understand the network of information traveling throughout our body. Before we get started exploring pathways, we need to discuss some fundamental definitions to describe the nervous system pathways we will draw. The nervous system is composed of tissue called white and gray matter. These names describe their gross appearance when transected. White matter contains various tracts of neuron axons. These are the long, thin projections that perpetuate action potentials to downstream neurons, or tissue. Gray matter is comprised of collections of neuron cell bodies, where the nucleus of the cell resides. The word nucleus can also be used to describe a discrete collection of neuron cell bodies in the central nervous system. A ganglion, on the other hand, is a conglomeration of neuron cell bodies in the peripheral nervous system. They often appear as bulges or plates of nervous tissue along a nerve. A decusation is a term used to describe the crossing over of nerve fibers between right and left sides of the body. There are many different ways that neurons can interact with each other and other cells in the body. Simply speaking, a synapse is the interaction between a neuron and another cell through the release of small particles called neurotransmitters. Often, when describing nerve pathways and interactions between neurons, a synapse will occur at the location of the next neuron cell body to carry the signal. The notable exception to this is that sensory ganglia, while containing neuron cell bodies, do not contain a synapse. In the nervous system, the word efferent, with an E, describes neurons or nerve fibers that are traveling away from the central nervous system toward the peripheral nervous system. Some of these neurons are sending information to skeletal muscle to perform voluntary motion. These are known as motor neurons. Similarly, the word afferent with an A describes neurons or nerve fibers that are traveling from the peripheral nervous system toward the central nervous system. These fibers are picking up signals from their environment and relaying them to the brain for processing and interpretation. These are also known as sensory neurons. The word somatic means relating to the body. In neuroanatomy, somatic describes nervous tissue that innervates or supplies the structures of the body wall. This mainly includes voluntary skeletal muscles. Visceral describes tissues that form organs. This includes involuntary structures like glands, blood vessels, and smooth muscle in organs like the heart, intestines, bladder, and so on. These systems are innervated by the autonomic nervous system that we will outline in a different video. Now that we know these basic definitions, we can put them together to define and describe nerve fiber types. General somatic efferent, abbreviated GSE, contain fibers that travel from the central nervous system to the peripheral nervous system and provide motor innervation to voluntary skeletal muscle. General somatic afferent fibers, abbreviated GSA, on the other hand, contain neurons that travel from the peripheral nervous system to the central nervous system, carrying sensory information from the body wall to the brain. As a side note, use of the word general simply differentiates these neuron fibers from special nerve fibers that are involved in our special senses, like vision, hearing, and smell. Visceral nerve fibers will be discussed and diagrammed in a separate video. Let's talk about the nerve systems that we will be exploring in this video. We will start by drawing out our main GSE, voluntary motor pathway. These neurons travel from the primary motor cortex down the spinal cord towards skeletal muscle fibers. This pathway is called the cortical spinal tract, abbreviated CST, which describes itself in its name, cortex in the brain to the spine. In the spinal cord, this tract travels down from the brain to the lateral white matter at approximately this location. There are two notable classifications of neurons in this pathway, upper motor neurons, abbreviated UMN, 
and lower motor neurons, abbreviated LMN. Along their course, the upper motor neurons will decusate or cross over to the other side of the body. The second type of nerve fibers discussed in this video, GSA sensory neurons, exist in two discrete pathways. The first pathway is the anterolateral system, abbreviated ALS, also called the anterior spinal thalamic tract, abbreviated AST. These neurons carry pain and temperature information from the body wall to the spinal cord and brain for processing and reflex development. In the spinal cord, this tract is located in the anterior lateral white matter on each side at approximately this location. The second pathway is called the dorsal column medial meniscal system, abbreviated DCML. This is the path that fine touch and proprioception, including positional information, take to the spinal cord and brain. In the spinal cord, this tract is located in the posterior medial white matter at this location. Both of these systems use a three-member chain to classify their neurons. These include first-order neurons, second-order neurons, and third-order neurons, first-order neurons synapse onto second-order neurons, and so forth. In these pathways, the first-order neuron is typically a pseudo-unipolar neuron, where the cell body extends off of the axon so that the signal can travel freely from one end to the other. Additionally, the second-order neurons in these chains will cross over to the other side of the body. For the CST, we will begin our pathway in the primary motor cortex, located anterior to the central sulcus in what is called the precentral gyrus. Neurons in this area will communicate with other regions of the frontal cortex and the thalamus to determine what movements to execute. Once an action is approved, upper motor neurons will carry the signal from the cortex, descending through white matter tracts in the brain and brainstem until it reaches the medulla oblongata, where it crosses over in the medullary pyramids. The signal will then continue down the contralateral spinal cord, traveling down the corticospinal tract until it reaches the desired spinal cord level. At this point, it will leave the tract and synapse on lower motor neurons in the ventral horn of the spinal cord. Lower motor neurons leave the spinal cord through the ventral root to the spinal nerve and out through the ventral and dorsal rami to find their target skeletal muscle tissue. Way to go! You just learned to move! Next we will draw out a pathway for the ALS or AST. If you can recall, this system is responsible for transmitting pain and temperature sensation from nervous structures on the body wall to the brain and exists as a three-neuron chain. We will start at the free nerve endings in the skin where, oh no, a fire! We better let the brain know about this. The first order neuron carries this signal from the body wall to the spinal nerve through the dorsal root and into the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. It is here that they synapse onto second order neurons. But wait, where is the cell body of our first order neuron? That's right, first order neurons are pseudo-unipolar, and their cell bodies live within the dorsal root ganglion, where there is no synapse. For the love of all that is holy, nothing synapses in the DRG. Now we will continue with our second order neuron, which is where the decusation or crossing over happens. In the AST ALS system, the decusation occurs during the initial ascent of the second order neurons within the anterior white commissure of the spinal cord. They are considered to cross over at or slightly above their spinal level of entry. The second order neuron will continue ascending on the contralateral side of the anterior spinothalamic tract until it reaches the thalamus, more specifically the VPL nucleus. There it will synapse onto a third order neuron. 
This third order neuron will carry the signal to the primary somatosensory cortex. Located posterior to the central sulcus, in what is also called the postcentral gyrus. The last pathway that we will draw in this video is the DCML. The DCML is responsible for transporting information about fine touch and proprioception from the body wall to the brain, and like the ALS AST pathway, includes a three neuron chain. The first order neuron in our DCML pathway will begin at stretch receptors in the skin and muscles. In the beginning, neurons follow a similar projection to that of the ALS AST system. They travel to the spinal cord via dorsal or ventral rami, spinal nerves, dorsal roots, and even have their neuron cell bodies within the dorsal root ganglion, where nothing synapses. Concurrent projections and interneurons within the spinal cord exist that communicate with lower motor neurons in the ventral horn to provide muscle feedback for reflexes. This connection is referred to as a gamma loop. Unlike our other sensory pathway, these DCML fibers do not synapse in the spinal cord. Instead, fibers directly ascend the ipsilateral spinal cord and the posterior white matter tracts, called the dorsal columns. There are two divisions of the dorsal columns, medial and lateral. They correspond to the location of their input. Sensory information from the lower extremity and inferior thorax will travel in the medial portion of this. Information from the upper extremity and upper thorax will travel in the lateral portion. We can draw a helpful graphic to remind us which section carries which information. Here we have a stick figure person. Notice how his feet are medial to his hands, and that his feet are on the grass. Information from the lower body travels through the medial dorsal column, called the fasciculus gracilis. This person's hands are located lateral to his feet, and are awfully cute. Information from the upper body travels through the lateral dorsal column, the fasciculus cuneatus. DCML fibers will continue to ascend on the ipsilateral side until they reach the medulla oblongata. Here, they will synapse on second-order neurons in their respective collection of cell bodies, the gracil and cuneate nuclei respectively. Second-order neurons from the gracil and cuneate nuclei will then do what second-order neurons do best, and decusate via a white matter tract named the medial lemniscus. Hence why this pathway is called the dorsal column medial lemniscal system. Fibers will then proceed to the thalamus to synapse on third order neurons. Third order neurons then terminate in the primary somatosensory cortex for processing, similarly to the ALS AST pathway. Looking back at the spinal cord and spinal nerves, some helpful generalizations can be made. In general, the ventral root transmits primarily efferent motor information away from the central nervous system. Likewise, the dorsal root carries mostly afferent sensory information toward the central nervous system. However, the spinal nerve, along with the dorsal and ventral rami, contain both efferent and afferent fibers. I hope you enjoyed following along with our somatic neuron pathways. Thank you for watching. I know this seems like a lot of information, but the most important thing is to practice and to have fun. Make sure you stay healthy and well. Until next time.